Hi and uh, welcome to the workshop. Uh, today I want to talk about G53, which is machine coordinate. We, I got some questions on why to use it and when to use it. Well, um, normally you maybe do not need to think about G53. I didn't that in the past because I always used the square for uh, 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 finding my corners and uh, I mainly used this corner down here and uh, made the, the search for it uh, here with the wizard. But uh, with time I have changed my routines and my workflow has also changed. And uh, that means that I combined the G53 with some few G54 or G55 for instance in my workflow. And why am I doing this? Well, first of all, as you can see here, I have a, a, a tool uh, measure. It uh, zeroes out my tool position. And uh, for that, I have to use G53. So why do I have that? Well, let's say that you use this method and don't care about the, the G53 and you now measure out the ends and the exact corner and start to run. In my workflow I have built in the routine that it has to go over here and measure the height of the tool. Um, and this I cannot do because my zero can be different places here on the table. So it will never work uh, because I really don't know what the exact position is here. And that is where G53 is coming into the picture. Because my um, zero is in that corner here, over here. And my position for, uh, for um, when I zero, zero out the G53, or not zero out, but it will zero out here. This means it will go to this contact over here, and it will go up on my contact, it's on the other side, and uh, this means it will go up, that will be zero, and it will go down in minus direction. The same is here, it's 0, 0.0 over here, and this is the minus y and this way is the minus x. So we will now uh, just run a little bit over here and down here and now I home all axes with the home all uh, button. So we just run through this procedure and that is I need to know exactly that I have a minus 800, I think that's on the x-axis, and minus 750 on the y-axis. And, and it goes in, and we have the exactly zero position for my workflow on G53. So how do I then, uh, uh, how do I use this? Well, we will look on some macros I'm, I'm using here afterwards. Uh, because uh, you will still, well, let me say it like that. In my workflow, as you can see here, you have a, the center. All, uh, more than 90% what I made is based from the center of my item. This means that all I use Kafka and everything I enter there is taking out uh, from this uh, position here. So what I can do, let's uh, play here that this is now mounted here. So now I can just go and just go up here and over there and let me say that we go. Oops, so that was a little bit too close. So, this is my work position in, G, in G54. 
So what I do now is that I here in, uh, in uh, Open Build Control set all access to zero. Whoopty. And the set access doesn't matter at all because uh, I will zero out my tool here so it knows exactly where it, it has to begin. Because I measure also when I uh, make the, the, the item in Capco, I also take it, uh, the measurements on the thickness of this item from the uh, table and up. And uh, this gives me a way to control uh, my, my workflow. And uh, first of all, we have now uh, zeroed out, we have found the exact G53. And I can now use some of my macros here that I have. And uh, I have made one, as you can see here, we can probe the set, we can change the tool, I can move back, but I can also move to the X, Y, set, zero position, which is in G54. Then I have a dust on and dust off for my vacuumizer. Let's take this to the change uh, tools position and discover what's happening here. The set axis goes up and it goes out on a position that you can see here on the screen has uh, is coming from G53. If I push the go to the X0, zero, Y0, zero, Z0 zero on uh, open bins control, you will see it will move into the zero position we have made because here I work in G54. And you see now it goes out there. Good. When I have changed my tool, which is in this position here, I now want to measure the height uh, on here. So here I set probe uh, set and it will move over and it will slowly go down onto the probe register. It will go up and go back to the change tool position because in some cases I need to put my dust shoe on and when I then and I'm then ready to run the job. I have also built in these procedures in uh, a post-processing file for Kafka. So this means when I because <laughs> I like to have a flow here, I do not like to have several files. I want all my work in one file. And uh, that I have made by uh, constructing this uh, post-process file for Kafka, and uh, and uh, it works very well. Uh, this means I can start the job. It will come over here. I change the tool to the right tool. I go uh, push resume and it will go over, measure. Then it goes back. I put on the dust shoe and then it continues going in and do the work. When the work is done, it comes over here again. And I, it only when I need a new tool, it goes over automatically, move over here and um, and uh, I can change the tool, go over and measure, back to get the dust you on, and continue this next step. And it continues as many times as it is. So let's uh, go in and take a look on a post-process file uh, in my computer, and uh, then we will um, run a little sequence where we have this tool change built in uh, and uh, yeah, it will be fun to see. So let's uh, dive into this. So let's take a look on the G53, which are here in the uh, post-process file to uh, Kafka. And you can see there's a lot here. That is especially when we have this uh, tool change uh, position, we move immediately over in G53. We are still there when we do the pause and then it continues and here you see there is a, a mix between G53 and G54. G54 is mainly because we will now probe the set axis on the position uh, X minus 365 and Y minus uh, 729. And when this is done it will compensate for the set height and the, which is the thickness, thickness of the probe. 
Let me continue into uh, to the uh, G53 again and raise uh, the set axis. Uh, this line can be erased <coughs> and then we go back and that is the start of the file that is the first tool then it starts to move and we get a tool change and it begins over again here we sh shut down the spindle and suction off and then you see again we add the exactly same commands and at the end we just uh, turn off the spindle and then we have uh, two G53 here and that is um, we raise the spindle and we go up to the right corner and move the spindle away from our work and then I enter here a G54 so we not start up with uh, uh, let's say a G53 so that's how the post-process file is working yes. The file here, so the file here is now what has been happened to uh, to the small things we did in in uh, in Carco, this little test we made there, and here you can see how it is built into the G code, and it Melanprac looks like the same as in the post process file, um, and uh, and we do the work, and now we come a tool change and probing again, tool change here and probing. And it goes out and uh, do all these uh, so we can change to the next uh, tool. So that's how it works for me. This means that I do not load several files. I just have one file with all the information in I need to run the project in one from one file. So let's go out and uh, take a look how it is in practice so first of all I will home all axes and we do that here and when this is done we will and well, I already have built in all the procedures into uh, into uh, the file in Kafka, and so the only thing I need to do is to uh, set my zero uh, point zero out there. And I guess it was on the right place. So let's see here. Ah, it's a uh, it's a nice spot. I will taking down this one at X Y Z zero. So and uh, now I will load. My G code, here it is, open. So now I have uh, loaded the, the G code, and as you can see, it is in here. And uh, it will now move out here to the uh, change tool position. So let's uh, just run the file. Now it moves out here, and I do all the changes I need. No spindle is running, no nothing here at the moment. And now I have done that, so I push resume, and it goes over here. Goes down and probe the set. And it's going back. I can now enter my demonstrations and I resume the job. The vacuumizer turns on and uh, it will start running the job. And it stops the vacuumizer, moves out again. Here we go. And I change the tool, which I have simulated now. 
and push resume and it goes down and probe the second tool and I can add the dust shoe which I will do and I push resume And we are running the square. There we go. And it goes up. And turns off the dust mover. And go back to the X0, Y0 position so uh, that's how my procedure is running with the G53 and uh, yeah it's uh, fun and I like this uh, kind of stuff so I hope it helped you a little bit about understanding more how and when to use the G53 stay safe Bye-bye.